Simon Pitt Keithley is CEO of Camden Unlimited and Euston Town Business Improvement Districts, as well as the Camden Collective, which uses vacant and underused buildings to provide meanwhile co working space. He's also behind the Camden Highline project. Uh, he's the Mayor's Champion for Small Businesses and a member of the London Local Enterprise Partnership. He also sits on the London Transition Board where he chairs the Business Reopening Subgroup. So Simon, it's exciting news at the moment. You've just announced the winners of the competition for the design for the High Line. Can you yeah, tell me the result and why you chose the team that you did? Yeah, no, indeed. Well, it was uh, James Corners Field Operations, who were uh, behind part of the uh, QE2 uh, Centre in the New York High Line. But they also assembled a really nice team of local people, VPPR architects, uh, based about 300 yards, I would think, from one end of the High Line. Um, and I think it was that wonderful mix of you know, innovation, great local connection and learnings from big international projects really that made them stand out. But it was a really strong field. I mean, the five shortlisted teams all could have done the job and the jury had a pretty fierce fight um, amongst themselves about who the eventual winner can be. And I, I think it was unanimous in the end, but not without a very long day of some very in, intense discussions, I know. Um, but, you know, we had, we had 75 submissions in the first round and uh, all of them were pretty good as well. You can see a lot of it on the, on the um, Camden Highland website. Uh, so it, we're, we're delighted. It's been a really interesting, very rewarding process, uh, both in terms of the enthusiasm that everyone's had for it, the response that we've got from local people and the interest uh, has been phenomenal, which has kind of been there with the Highline all the way through. I mean, we've had... 1500 people have been on walks. You can't even get up there yet. You can just walk around underneath it. So I think there's been this real groundswell of interest and enthusiasm for it. And, and the competition's kind of brought that out really. So we're, we're absolutely delighted. I mean, the hard work begins now, but you know, that's part of the fun. And so you are out now raising money to build it, are you? Or have you got lots of money already? Oh yeah, we got all the money. You know, yeah, we we we've got to raise uh, the money to build it. But you know, we people were saying we couldn't raise the money to do the feasibility, and we did that. Then it was couldn't raise the money to do the design and planning, and we've done that. Um, we need about twelve million quid to build the first bit, um, which you know doesn't feel that undoable. Um, and so, and and you know, lots of good conversations already. So I'm I'm, I'm optimistic, and I think as as the the process of bringing the design together. And getting it to the, to, to to and through planning uh, will all help that as well. So you know, very very excited and optimistic about it. Really, it's going to be an amazing park in the sky. Very good. I'm sure it will be. Uh, so, as as champion for small businesses, uh, what are you advising the mayor that he should be doing to help them? Well, I think that at the moment it's all about getting ourselves ready for recovery. So much of that resides in central government so actually the work that we do on the transition board where it's chaired by Robert Jenrick and the mayor I think is important in terms of helping both sides understand the importance of getting support into local businesses so they survive um, as many as it can in the short term but also so that we're ready this time for the re for the for the release you know that sort of um, escape velocity is as steep as we can make it um, in order that we that th those businesses can take advantage of that but that also it's not premature hokey cokey is no good to anyone so I think there's a lot of the stuff that we're doing in and around leap around the COVID recovery board transition board which is all um, uh, speaks to that I think the other thing that is um, important to flag up is things like the London Business Hub that's a sort of central repository for all the information that businesses need um, so anything we can do to kind of help get that in front of the faces of the people that need it most. Um, I, I, I often say, I think that's more important than say the, 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 the level of awareness of LEAP or, or, or London LEP. It's more about what's the conduit for getting this information and resource into the hands of the people, people that need it most. So um, yeah, how do we make, make sure we come out of this as well and as fast as we can, uh, and then make sure that as many resources as we can are in the hands of the people that need it most. So you mentioned LEAP or uh, uh, the Local Enterprise Partnership. Uh, so what actually does it do? I mean, it seems to have a very low profile, but it's got a lot of money to spend. It has. I mean, if, it's interesting. If you compare the London LEP to other parts of the country, 
it's sort of operating in a um uh, a, a much bigger pond and so attention is more limited and i think back to my earlier point that it, it's let if, if i could wish things it would be more people knew about london business hub than knew about leak necessarily but absolutely we do have a lot of resource and the fact that it is a um it's chaired by the mayor but is um dominated in membership by business uh members from the private sector people like myself um helping to make those sorts of decisions so i you know i chair the uh european social investment fund committee for you know we've still got that money to spend uh, it hasn't actually run out yet um how we're going to look at what the sh new shared prosperity fund which i think is a big uh worrying issue for london i have to say um whether london's going to get its its appropriate share of that given the current political environment um uh, and, and, and of course, it scrutinises an awful lot of the investment decisions that come through LEAP, whether it's the growth fund, but there's, a, there's an investment committee that, you know, is, is, a, is a, you know, it's quite a fiery place, you know, there's a lot of challenge uh, thrown around there and, and the private sector members of LEAP are not retiring violets, you know, uh, opinions are strong and um, easily expressed, shall we say. Uh, so I think that's, you know, a lot of what we do is challenging decisions, trying to work out the best thing to do in terms of overall strategies um, and, 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 and trying to improve the quality of those decisions so that money gets, you know, we can always spend more money quicker and better. I mean, it's a constant, you know, challenge. How do we do more better quicker? Um, but I think we're doing OK. Um, and, it, I, you know, I, I accept the fact that not that many people know about LEAP or about all its work. The information's there, but would I wish that it started to have a bigger profile than the other big brands around the GLA, then I don't think that would necessarily improve the outcomes. So can you tell me maybe a couple of specific projects where it's, uh, that it's supported or? Yes, of course, and I have some here already prepared, of course. Uh, well, I, th I think the FC Design Collective in Finsbury Park is, is, a, is a really nice uh, initiative there. I mean, people can go and look up, look up the detail of that. Um, I think Spark in Ilford is a really nice one uh, that we've done there. Um, What's that? What's Spark in Ilford? The Spark in Ilford is it's a, a sort of cultural quarter, Ilford Town Centre. Um, so there's a whole sort of range of activities um, and some publicly owned assets around um, the town hall there in Redbridge. Um, so I think that's that's the sort of, and I, and I think there, there's a rate. I mean, you can go to the Leap website and see a list of list of projects. Um, I think that almost all of them, I would say, wouldn't have got off the ground in the way that they have without Leap support. I think that's what we've certainly tried, and in, I think in a lot of cases managed to put the resource where others wouldn't, in order to lift projects that that you know wouldn't happen otherwise. Um, so I think that they're, they're very good. I think the way we spent the European Social Investment Fund money, that's ESF and ERDF, and it gets terribly complicated. And, um, you know, all those those rules that the EU put around uh, those sorts of monies, um, it, it can make it quite hard to spend. But if you look again at some of those projects, I think there's some really good ones there. And they've helped, you know, people who wouldn't necessarily have access to that kind of resource, um, closer to employment and, and, and those sorts of things, which I think is, you know, it's what we're there for. So you're a, a champion of, of meanwhile uses and your own office even is in a sort of meanwhile situation. So um, how, how, how can we stop central areas looking like ghost towns, do you think, as major retail occupiers start to uh, shut up shop as a result of COVID? Yeah, I, I, I mean, that's that's obviously what we spend a lot of time thinking about on the various bits of recovery and transition boards that I'm involved in. I mean, I think I think meanwhile use is a very good opportunity and I wish that we could have more conversations with landowners uh, around it. I think people are sometimes nervous of meanwhile and worried that people, it'll be too successful in a way and then it'll become hard to, to, to move out. It's one of the things in, in Camden Collective, we've had 20 spaces in the last 10 years. And I think one of the things we have a reputation for is giving them back the minute anyone asks, no question, you know, we don't make, make that difficult for people at all. Um, and give people lots of good publicity in the meantime, you know, people often appreciate the building we're at the moment is owned by TfL and we, we both we and TfL won a whole series of awards just recently for, for, for that collaboration. Um, so I think that, you know, more conversations like that, I think, I think would help. But I think the, the, the really challenging part of your question is, well, what's that new town centre, city centre, high street economy going to look like? And none of, none of us know. But I do think that 
um, some of the stuff around the deep work agenda. So, so we've all learned to become, we, we know the international tourist scene is not gonna return for a period of time. Um, hopefully when it does, that'll bring back a lot of the trade that's lost, but whether the, the office occupancy is gonna come back in the same way, I think is, is, is a much more important question, frankly, long-term. Um, so I suspect that we've learned to do what we're doing now very well, and those virtual teams will need places to land to do more in-depth work around the three C's of you know, clients, community, collaboration. And so how can we construct facilities that allow that sort of thing to happen? So me and my team will want to, you know, we want to spend two or three days together, partly because we want to have fun together. You know, there's a bit of, you know, social stuff that we'll miss. Um, so we might want to, you know, stay somewhere, have a safe, COVID safe or, you know, safe environment to be in um, that suits all our work needs and our sort of social and cultural needs all in a kind of one place. So I think those are the sorts of things I'd like to see more meanwhile experimentation around, because that'll help us better understand how that's going to work. And of course, the long term impacts of that on things like TFL on, um, you know, th think about where our deliveries are going now. They, they're not going in the pizza slices into central areas now. They're going around the crust. You know, the North and South Circular are probably the biggest conduits for deliveries now compared to the, the, the more pizza slicey uh, routes um, that, that, that we're used to. And how does how does our city adapt to that? Um, so I think there's there's a whole lot of things that with a bit more interest in meanwhile i think we could do stuff like that and i'd much rather that we could find ways of pushing meanwhile uses than that, that in our enabled particularly say um highly leveraged commercial property owners who are worried about um that debt not being serviced for a long time and the banks behind them probably even more worried um we've got this opportunity of permitted development rights that I think lots of us are very worried about because once it goes resi, it never goes back. Um, um, and I think that I could imagine that one of the things in government's mind is, well, this is something for those indebted owners to wave at their banks to say, don't foreclose yet. Is there something we could do around allowing meanwhile uses to operate in those spaces rather than go right the way to resi that will give us time to conduct those experiments and try things out before, in a sense, that that it's not quite a house of cards, but you, 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 those worrying developments uh, become permanent. Um, so I think there's a lot of um, opportunity to be done there. And, 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 you know, we've helped, I think, two and a half thousand people have come through Collective in the last 10 years. These are generally not typically we work people. Um, they're very diverse. Um, but they're people who've got something about them, want to start a business. We'd like them to do it in Camden Town or Houston. Um, and if they, they, they can sort of help themselves, we can help them. And that's why we give them free space mostly. Thank you very much, Simon, for, for your thoughts. I, I think one of the things I notice about uh, City at the moment, so many more people out walking. So that bodes very well, I think, for the, the High Line. So I'm sure that will help you uh, raise your money. So uh, thank you very much. Not at all.